and here, the far field, x, y. And the, you see, because I know the velocity here is zero, the velocity therefore was v here for so any point here on this aircraft. Because I was measuring the velocity with respect to this coordinate system. So this is what I did last time. I pick a point here in infinity, and then there is a hole in the streamline. Like goes around that. There is another point here. Streamline goes all around it. Like this. And there is one particular point at infinity that the streamline comes here, stagnates. Stagnation point. So this particle here gets stuck. And then from the gauge pressure, you can write the relation force. So pressure here is equal to pressure here, and it has such A. And then I said from this point at infinity, so this is my point at infinity. If I go along this streamline, I can write Bernoulli here. That's what I did last time. So you have from point infinity, P infinity, plus one half, rho infinity, V infinity, Square is equal to, and we did ignore the elevation difference. P at this point A plus one half rho at point A, velocity at point A squared. There is a GZ here, rho GZ, but again, I forgot, not forgot, I ignored the elevation difference. Okay. Now look at it. We also had to make one more assumption here, and that assumption was okay. We assume the density is, in fact, that's the way we draw the Bernoulli equation to take it out of the table. The density was constant all over from the infinity to this point that the particle comes and stagnates. No matter how high the aircraft is flying. But look. From this equation, what we did, we said in this coordinate system, that I put my coordinate system here, at infinity, my velocity is zero, right? And then my pressure is 101 kilopascal. And then pressure at A, I have it, sensor. And then velocity at A, I can find it. But look, we have to make the assumption the density is precisely equal to rho infinity. And that density, no matter how hard you go, is given to you. But look, this is extra assumption. This extra, wrong, extra assumption. In the real life, this is not very accurate to make this assumption. So what if the other alternative <coughs> approach, instead of put, putting my air coordinate system here, let's put my coordinate system on the aircraft. X, Y. Question, can I do that? Yes. Yeah. yeah. If the aircraft is accelerating, can I do that? Yeah. Yeah. Who said no? Who is it? Why not? Why not? Uh, because the, it makes your coordinate system, like, it changes over time and messes up with the uh, coordinates. So if you go back way, way back in elementary history, they had something called inertial coordinate system. What was the inertial coordinate system? A coordinate system that is either at rest and is constant in space or moving with constant velocity. It's not accelerating. No rate of change in velocity. In that coordinate system, you can write Newton law. Some f is equal to mA. In fact, we write everything. This is a momentum that we do the integral form, and out of the integral form, we apply the line integral, and we got Bernoulli. So this guy, it looks very different than that, but it's a, from the same model. And what was the requirement for Newton's law? The reference coordinate system must be inertial coordinate system. Otherwise, we can't go into it. So therefore, this is not valid, and therefore, it's not valid. So the coordinate system here must either the aircraft stays at rest, which is not possible, it falls. <laughs> we call it a stall, a stalling. Or moving with constant velocity. Is that possible? 
Yes. In fact, even the aircraft is accelerating. This sensor, if you do all this equation, you may get a little bit error in your velocity measurement because the Bernoulli is not that good. But the acceleration is not that bad. It's very a slow change of rate of change. So the velocity almost is a good assumption. So yes, I can put my coordinate system right here. In fact, let's imagine you're sitting here. So that's you. You fall off. <laughs> yeah, you fall off. But I want to make a, uh, we want to make some. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. And we don't discriminate, so this could be good. <laughs> So if I see there, if I sit there, now this is interesting, that's the reason I would draw this. If I sit there, in fact, that's my coordinate system. What's the speed of this point? What's the speed of this point? The speed lost by your plane. V, the speed of plane. You see that? That's the difference. Now write the null equation in this coordinate system. In this coordinate system, this guy's coordinate system. It looks a little bit uh, scary. <laughs> but if you write coordinate system there for that, again, you have the same equation. P infinity plus one half rho infinity. Velocity at infinity squared is equal to P at A plus one half rho at A, D at A squared. But look at it. The good thing right now, there is the good news, because the velocity that this guy observed on the coordinate system attached to the aircraft is zero, VA is zero in this case. So it doesn't matter how much you row it, you don't need to make an assumption for row it, unlike the last one we made an assumption and was very inaccurate. Right now, you don't need to, because it's zero, zero times one half of row, zero. So the only thing is row A. PA, do I have PA pressure A? Yes, the sensor. I do have that. Now let's go back to infinity. At infinity, what do I have for P infinity? Again, 101 KPA plus one half rho infinity and then V infinity squared. What's the V infinity in this case? V squared. The speed of plane. So it's equal to P8. That's it. Now solve for the speed of plane. What do you get? You get uh, one half rho infinity V square is equal to P8 minus 101 KPA over, uh, so this multiplied by two over rho infinity squared. That's the speed of aircraft. Now, just like the pressure at the infinity, right, at the infinity, I'm gonna give the same problem to you in the test and say, well, at the infinity, the pressure is 101 kPa, right? And the temperature is also 25 degrees Celsius. Now, find the speed of aircraft if my sensor measures, if P sensor measures sensor measures like let's say 125 kPa. So what you do, you write. First of all, you never memorize. If I see you start with that, you get zero. You have to create this stream line and check mark this point, check mark this point, A infinity, write the null equation, and then solve for that, and you get that. I want to see your hand right Right? Now let's plug the number in it. So we this is a speed of aircraft. V is equal to just V here in that case. Square root of two, do I have PA or P sensor? 125 <coughs> PA. 125 minus 105, one, 
APA, so that's 10 to 3 is kilo, right? Divided by rho infinity. Do I have rho infinity? No, this is this variable. Is this the ideal gas equation? So we have two three variables. So I should increase them because we don't really have that much energy. I should increase the number of medium waivers, green waivers. Hopefully by the end of the semester we have to have four or five medium waivers. And one final waiver. Maybe two. So I do not have no infinity. So what should I do? Well, I see in the infinity we have one chapter for doing ideal gas. And I know L is ideal gas. It's a very good example of ideal gas. For ideal gas, I have P is equal to rho RP, right? So if I solve that for rho at infinity, right here, so rho infinity is equal to P infinity over R, <coughs> T infinity, right? R is just constant, gas constant, right? So now I have just everything I need. So you put one on one, 10 to three, for P infinity, 101 kilopascal. So you put 10 to 3 divided by 287 for gas constant times T. Then I put 25. Something is wrong here. Can you tell me? Well, who is there? Needs to be chain Kelvin. You have to add yeah. 173. Who is there? Who was your name again? Preston. Preston. Yeah. This is, in fact, if you put 25, you realize why we don't want. The unit Kelvin is very, probably the most useless thing in the physics. <laughs> but the only time it's used is just to plug the number in the freezer. It doesn't have any physical meaning. Like zero Kelvin, you can find it. There is no zero Kelvin. Did you know that? There is no zero Kelvin. You can get close to zero Kelvin if you go to far, far away galaxy, like empty space. And we never encounter that. The mechanical engineers, they don't really care about it. So, <laughs> Kelvin is just the most useless uh, thing for mechanical engineering. The only time you use it is just to plug the number in the equation. So 25 plus 273.1. So you get density from there. So you can put the number here. And then the sensor number, PA is what? Yeah, I already did. And then you can compute the velocity of, of the aircraft. So this is, a, this is more accurate compared to the thing that we did last time. If I give you the exam, put your coordinate system on the aircraft. By the, doing that, you need to make assumptions for rho at A. <coughs> OK? All right, so let's go uh, to the next problem. Next problem is this problem. The question is, find velocity at 20 dB. 20 dB. Again, I may give uh, a question probably next class as a quiz because we haven't considered the energy equations yet, the losses. And then I may give something like that, and the answer is multiple choice question. Right? Multiple choice question. 
and say, uh, find the velocity at B. And then we have some options. And one of the options, I'll talk about it in a minute, is just, we can't do yeah. that right now. That's one of the options. And then the other option is if V is like this number, V is like that number, V, V. And then non, known is usually the last option. I always give it, and usually some students pick known. They don't even have time to solve it, they say no. So here is the thing. When I give problem like that, I don't, I'm not looking after your formula or number substitution right now. I'm looking after your uh, top process. So you start with like a string line, right? And you write Bernoulli for you. So there's going to be, in point A, there's going to be a string line that goes all the way like this and exits. That's where the string line is, right? And I say, is this? Steady or unsteady? Is it steady? They don't assume it's moving, shaking patterns, right? It's just constant over time. So you gotta have a steady. What other assumption do you have for that? You remember that? Yeah, the density is constant. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. Density is constant. In fact, it's just water is compressible and it's density is everywhere thousand kilograms per meter cube. And then density constant. Uh, but I have elevation change, you see, from this point to this point. But last time when I did Bernoulli, I also included the elevation change, so I'm in good shape. I have elevation change, I have constant density, and the steady state. Now the question is, when I write Bernoulli equation like this, from between A and B in this string line, can I say one half for VA square plus VA? Plus rho v v a is equal to one half rho v b square plus v b plus rho v v b. This is the most general case so far we have derived for Bernoulli equation. Can I apply that in this case? Let me ask a question. Can I apply it? Yes or no? Why not? Let's say it for, for you only. Do not answer it. Why, why I can't apply it? <coughs> and if I can apply it, then why I can't apply it? Ne next, uh, Jude, yeah. Does that mean the unknowns? No. The question is, forget about number substitution. Can I start with that equation, the Bernoulli equation, for that problem? Uh, you can't because of the elevation change in that equation doesn't. Uh, yeah, if I include the elevation change, equals rho This is the Bernoulli equation we drive two classes ago. Okay. The most general. Okay. So, what, so I, I, you said I cannot apply it then? The question is can I apply it or not apply it? I'd say you could. Yes? Yeah. If you, you say you can apply it? So you remember when we did this integral, when we did the momentum equation, rho v v v plus surface integral rho v v dot m ds is equal to what? Sum of external forces, external. You see we had that, you remember that? The momentum equation. And then for the external forces we said what? Let's assume we have only the pressure forces and the body force, rho gz. What did I say was shear stress? Friction. Yeah. Come back. We did not like add it. We did not add it yet. We will add it later. We'll add it later soon. So right now, I do not have effects coming from the friction. So what does it mean? That means this equation which Identical, identical to this equation, but I drive this from the heart of this equation. So that's the same. What assumption was what? The force coming from the pressure forces? And, yeah, in this, and the rho gz, the elevation distance. 
That's the assumption of this. And then I draw this equation. So I can apply this equation to the problem that I do not have friction, you see? This is external force, there is also tau, friction. The stress, you see? The stress tensors. The stress, shear stress. Shear stress. I did not include it right now. I will include it later, step by step. So with this assumption, which I have that, the most fundamental assumption is we do not have friction. Now here, for this equation, we have lots of loss in friction. So this equation, although it, it looks nice, but for engineers and good engineers, this is not a good start point. Because the, the start point is given as wrong assumption. The assumption here is no friction, and here is they have lots of friction. So if I give problems like that, yeah. Why do we have so much loss and friction there, but not for like our, our novels? We'll talk about it. This is, uh, in fact, in the real life, you always have friction. In the real life, you always have friction, and uh, the friction is something that you cannot ignore. But for the nozzles, the, uh, the length is small. The cross-section area is large. So the number of attachment, the molecular attachment to the surface is small compared to the pipe. You see, pipe is usually very small cross-section, but it's very, very long. It's very, very long. So even though they have the same surface of attaching to the water, but because this guy is so long, the amount of friction, because that's per unit length, is significant, right? Now, if I give a question like that, the answer do not overcomplicate. The answer may be extremely easy. They say, choose a question, they say we cannot even <coughs> apply this. Do not plug the number, don't waste your time to plug the number. I may give some numbers here. Which I did, right? Don't plug the numbers here. And say, well, the velocity is going to be equation in this. Why? Because in the case when we have friction, you need to have the effect of friction added. Now we'll do that later. We come back to this equation, the most general case of momentum equation, and say now the sum forces, the right hand side, is pressure, <coughs> the elevation change, and now effect come from shear stress tensor. And then using that, we rewrite the Bernoulli equation and we get a more accurate equation. All right, it's called Darcy wave up. The wave up German that's that's what it is. So that's the equation that you will use in the lab, it's called Moody chart. That lab we have to skip it, put it in the end of semester, so by that time you have all the knowledge you need in order to substitute number there and use the chart. But right now, I cannot apply this. Now, here is what I'm going to do. In this test, or maybe next class, or maybe next week, whatever quiz test, you can call it, I say, well, let's say the effect of friction is very small. Frictionless. So I say, no loss at all. No loss at all. Friction is now, can I apply that? Yes. Yeah. yes. I have all the conditions met when I drive this equation out of the mother equation. Right? Pressure difference, elevation difference. In fact, that was a good point that you mentioned, the elevation change. You see, you always should check for all terms, including the elevation change. So we have everything in the Bernoulli equation. So let's substitute the numbers here. One half. So this is my point A, one half thousand for rho times VA squared. Do I have VA? Yes. Two squared plus PA. One over one into three plus thousand times nine into one times Z at A. Let's put your quote. You see, this is one thing I want to talk today is when we say the elevation at A, you can put your coordinate system at A or anywhere, X, Y. My coordinate system should be read what? As long as I write, this is just a moment. You see, this equation is just the Newton second law. It's just a more fancy way when you have particle leaving your system, right? What was my assumption to write this equation? The reference coordinate system is inertial. That means it's constant. 
giving a reference for moving the parts along. So you can put the coordinate system here, or you can put it here, or you can put it here. It really doesn't matter. I'll show you that it really doesn't matter. Let's go ahead and put it at point A. Right? So for ZA, what should it have to do? What about for ZB? Now, let's start with that, and then I'll put the coordinate system at B and see what we get. Right? So here, zero. And then the right hand side should be equal to one half of two thousand times VB. Do I have VB? That's what I'm starting with. VB squared plus VB. Hundred. Then three. Plus rho DB. So thousand times nine eighty one. Now, uh, solve for me. Why is we doing what I want? As you can see, something is not physical in the game. Numbers are already used here. If you, for, for this elevation, if you need to pump, right? You, you, can, you have to pump this one at one position. You have to pump this water to go 20 meters higher. So I gave you the atmosphere pressure. Because if you just wanted to have some number to stop this there. But do you think that's a, that's a physical thing? That's a physical situation if you just put water in the atmospheric pressure, do you think it's gonna go 20 meter high? Mm -hmm. So right now with this assumption, you have what? You get a negative. Yeah. So you get imaginary numbers. So let's up this to 200 kVN. Let's up it to 200 kVN. So you put a pump there. You see this is when you don't have pump and it makes sense in physics. If you don't, don't have pump, you get a negative, that means it's impossible. So if you put a pump, so that's gonna that's gonna uh, up it to 200 kPa. Um, 200 on the um, on the A side or on, B side? On the A side. Let's see it. Let's put 600 kPa. <laughs> Off the pump. You see this is really what happened with this one. You off the pump, it still doesn't go. You off it. You off it. At some point it starts going up. That's what exactly happened. So let's off the pump to 600 kV. With the uh, if we did set the pressure at 200, um, we could find the, the height of how high it would go. Exactly. That's that's another problem with series for uh, quiz or not quiz because you don't really have time, but for me then. So I may just give you the same, like what would be the minimum pre pump pressure so that you reach to the atmosphere pressure with almost zero velocity? Okay. So you solve for that, okay? So in that case, if you have six atmosphere here, pump. So let's add a pump here. And this pump, the, make the pressure A to be 600 kPa. It is six 
ATM, signal and stuff transfer. In that case, again, this all moves off the same atmospheric pressure and the velocity here should be BV. In that case, when you substitute number here, the only change here is you put 600. The rest of the is the same. So put that 600. You get 500 from BV squared is equal to 24.7 meters per second. So you put an extremely strong, powerful pump to emit six ATM and goes all the way, not only is it here, but the velocity, because you think that you put the minimum pipe here, what happens? It goes all the way here, but the velocity here is just very small. Like almost it's still all the energy is both way off. Right? So try that not only you reach here with this pressure, but also you have good amount of velocity. Very strong part. Now next problem is this problem. We have a nozzle to the converging, converging nozzle. To the ground. The velocity here is uniform. In the midterm, I'm going to give you a parabolic velocity. Just exactly the same problem, but parabolic. So you have to do integral to find answer to that. V is one meter per second. The radius is given. Radius here, par centimeter. The radius here, one centimeter. And the question here is, before I do the question, we also put a U2. Which is five here. <coughs> so you have uh, this A 
H is given to you. Sorry. Where is Y centimeters? And this is just water. It's not mercury, it's just <coughs> water. <coughs> This will mean fluid. Main fluid is going this way. Right? Now the question is part A, find the, let's just make it one part, find the force, the reaction force. The reaction force required required to keep the nozzle in place. So what am I trying to get? Well, if you really go build this nozzle and put a pump here and apply, turn it on, what happens, you need to fix this nozzle, right? Otherwise, it's going to go with the water, right? So there is a reaction, what is F? I know there is also a reaction this way from vector status, but that reaction is going to be equal to weight of the nozzle and the fluid in the water region. It's not, I'm not uh, worried about that. I'm worried about the reaction only, but it requires to keep the nozzle in place. If I don't have this fixture, what happens, the nozzle is going to move to the right. Very obvious, very intuitive. Now, what is the value of this force in Newton's? Well, the solution to that, five steps, system, FTD, cohesion, solve, verify. When I verify it, the last step, if I take this for my default f, the number I get from equation must be positive. Otherwise, if I get negative, that means this guy, this reaction need to put it this way to keep it in place, which is not physical. So I'm just something, something like that. Last is the verification. But right now, let's just solve the equation. Let's just solve the system. What system should I choose? Well, I'll read the question. If the question was just asking to find the velocity here, if it was asking just find the velocity here, what system would you use? This is string line, right? There's a cube that goes through the string line. And I already have my FPD equation derived in the last class and taking this equation. So I was pretty much done if I was just asking for velocity here. But look, this is asking me to find the force, highlight it, that means this. So when I choose my system in step one, I have to have a boundary of the system that passes through that point. So this is the way I choose the system. I choose the entire nozzle, which is passing through that support. Do you see that? So hopefully, by applying the momentum equation in the next step, which is that equation on the top. See that? Then you get only a five minutes. Then you get F. So that system, call it system one. Check mark FPD. Well, I just consider that as FPD, except there is a velocity here. Let's say this is point A, and every point here is A because the flow is just one dimensional and not that important. Velocity A, A. Here, call point B, therefore velocity B. And here, you see, although, let's say it's invisible, that means even in the wall, I have moving part, parts here. But look, the normal, this is normal to the wall. It's always perpendicular to the velocity. That means the dot product is always zero. So when you expand the surface integral, the volume integral, you got to pay attention to this fact. Even if you invisible, 
That surface conservation is zero. There is no flow passing, no flux in all of this. So let's write the equation. So that's my system. And that's pretty much my FDD. I have my force. You need to show me in the test. You need to show this FDD, which has the force, the flow coming in, flow leaving out, and everything. And then I do a vision. The vision that I have is this. Now, what, what are the external force? Well, we already mentioned two of them. One, one was the gravity. Do I have a change in elevation? So, you know, I don't really care about the distance. Where is that? The rho g. I like it. I'll show you it's going to be zero. And then the next thing is going to be pressure. And the next thing is going to be, so if I include pressure and gravity, am I done? What else do you see here? There is no pressure and gravity. Huh? Normal force. Who said reaction? Wizard. That was a really good wizard. So it, you see here, not only you have pressure forces, there is a pressure difference here, right? That pushes you away. Not only you have pressure forces, but also you have this force coming from reaction. This is not a pressure force. This is on the surface of control volume. So when you add them together, you have to add it here. You're right. So let's expand this integral. What about this term? Y0? Huh? I mean, you should really say this like immediately. We have done this so many times. Say it again. This is time derivative of something zero. What does it mean? Steady state. The steady state. So that's the term of the steady state. <coughs> Right, it's steady state. So I get what? I get this term is equal to this term. And this term was what? Was the surface integral made it two? Yes. Plus volume integral, rho g easily. Then minus f. If your x is this way, then you have minus fi. So that's your equation. So let me write it here again. If you expand this equation, let's expand this equation. Let's first go over the surface. What do I get for this integral? V dot m is what? If you move over this surface, V dot m is what? Zero. Zero. Are you really tired of doing that or not answering? or not ready to answer. I mean, when I say what this V dot N is on the surface here, this is N and this is V. You should really say V dot N is zero. I don't get any feedback at all. What's wrong here? Mine was still writing down the, the other yeah. equation. Well, that's the reason we take photos and videos so you really don't need to write it down. But if you if you write it, take notes, that's fine. But this is zero, so let me, let me write the form of the drawing. Not happy at all. So when you expand it over here, you get rho a dA times dA minus, and then you turn here plus rho b db db positive, there is the a at A, or S at A, and then S at B, and then that's going to give you negative times negative positive dA, S at A, minus P, the other one is zero, P, minus P, this guy becomes zero, and then finally you make this thing. So this is the key thing you get from momentum. We'll do that next class. We don't have time. In 50 minutes, you cannot teach me again. Uh, I'm not an organizer, so the organizer should know that in 50 minutes, nobody can teach me again. But it's okay.
when you expand this, which I'm going to do next class, you get this equation. And then, can I solve that equation? Can I solve that equation? What do I need? You see, I'm, I'm trying to get F, so this is only unknown. What do I need? I need all of this. Can I, can I get DD? How can yeah. I get DD? For no You have VA, you have rho A, you have DD. Right? The, the surfaces you have all those information. How do you get the PA minus PB? What's it That's the theory. You use the Q, you see the R here, H times rho, water times G is going to be in your delta P. And then you solve for everything.